We're talking other people's English, code meshing, code switching, and African-American literacy from the book of the same name with one of the authors, Vershawn A. Young, a professor of English and African-American studies at the University of Kentucky. We'll talk about Ebonics, linguistic double consciousness, and if snubbing spoken soul is a vestige of racism. Dr. Vey, which is the, what you, you like to be called, yes. welcome to the show. We appreciate you stopping by. Uh, you're doing a lot of great things in the community. You're working with the Carter G. Woodson School, which folks We'll learn more about when they watch the full program. But we want to talk about this this book, code meshing, code switching. What do those two things mean, and which one do you prefer? I prefer code meshing. Okay. <laughs> tell us, tell us, uh, give us a definition, and then tell us why. Uh, code switching means, in educational context, using one language or dialect in one context. So using standard English at school and at work and using African-American English, for instance, with friends and family. That's switching, according mm -hmm. to context. I prefer code meshing, bringing those two together, bringing standard English at home with friends and families, but using African-American English as well, and using African-American English and standard English in school and in professional context. Even though it may not be widely accepted to be practicing code meshing, you still think that it's one way to overcome that one of the hurdles existing still in, in racism, that this is an actual practice of racism not to allow and embrace code meshing. Is That's that right. Correct? Yeah. Yes, I think code meshing will break down one of those last barriers of racism. Yeah, and while we have you here, we don't talk so much about it in the program, but you've got an interesting work that you're doing now, uh, I guess comparing and contrasting the black experience of President Barack Obama, August Wilson, the playwright, and Tyler Perry. That sounds like an interesting combination. <laughs> yeah, actually I'm looking at the way in which they perform masculinity mm -hmm. in an era where black men should be um, exhaling. Like what kind of um, performances do they have to don and put on in order to be successful? Oh. Why does Tyler Perry always wear a dress, for instance? Mm -hmm. Why does August Wilson call himself a race man and challenge um, white theatrical practices? Mm -hmm. And then Barack Obama, I mean, he was called our first female president at the beginning of his 2008 campaign. Mm -hmm. So why was it that Newsweek, Kathleen Parker in the Washington Post, the columnist referred to Barack Obama as a female. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I'm investigating about black masculine performance in this new book. Yeah, we can't wait for that to come out. But we will be talking a lot about code matching and code switching on Connections on Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on KET2, Sunday at 1.30 on KET, the main network. And you can watch online anytime at KET.org slash connections. Hope to see you.